Now, in a new report on the Southeast Asian nation of Myanmar, Human Rights Watch has detailed how at least six political prisoners, prisoners were effectively tortured to death whilst in custody. The rights group says the deaths were just the tip of the iceberg. It's accusing the Myanmar military junta of responsibility for scores of deaths in custody since it took power in a coup in February last year. Human Rights Watch has called for the international community to show the junta that there will be consequences for its crimes. Manny Mong is the Myanmar researcher at Human Rights Watch and the author of that new report. And she joins me now from Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Manny. Now, you've documented the deaths of six detained activists, all allegedly involving torture. How do you know that this is just the tip of the iceberg, as you've said in your report? Thanks, Anya. Actually, um, we know that there's dozens who've died in custody from apparent torture. But these six cases specifically I was able to document because we could speak to sources and witnesses of those who saw the bodies afterwards. Um, some of these cases happened months ago, uh, almost immediately after the coup, but it's taken this long for people to feel brave enough to speak out. And that just shows the level of fear and the climate of fear that's prevalent in the country. Manny, what can or what should be done to hold Myanmar's military rulers account accountable for atrocities such as the ones that you're describing? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very difficult to hold a, a transigent government, let alone a military junta, um, accountable inside the country. But it doesn't absolve them of the responsibility to actually investigate these crimes um, and nonetheless actually give justice to the families in some way by explaining how they died. But in these cases, Although the bodies had marks of torture and um, we know that torture is prevalent, especially in the military interrogation centres and prisons and, and uh, police stations, they were told, the families were told that these people had died just from heart failure. So a very unsatisfactory response. But governments can hold the military accountable and these include the targeted and enhanced sanctions that we've been calling for at HRW repeatedly. Um, but also we want to see the UN Security Council step up and finally refer the country's situation to the International Criminal Court. They did this very quickly after the Ukraine crisis um, and we'd like to see them follow up and do the same with Myanmar after all these months. Could you, Manny, give us a sense of how Myanmar's human rights situation has changed since the uh, military coup in 2021? Uh, the human rights violations um, are ongoing and war crimes are taking place you know, almost on a daily basis at this moment. We've had targeted arrests of lawyers, journalists, activists, dissidents, even people who decide to take to Facebook to you know, air their grievances or just show that they aren't in support of the military coup. Um, some of these cases of the people who died in custody were exactly that, people who had you know, said that they were very dissatisfied, had gone to protests, weren't activists themselves necessarily, but then effectively were arbitrarily detained and then died in custody after apparent torture. So it's also getting very difficult to document these stories because of the increasingly closed nature of um, you know, how Myanmar military is ruling the country at the moment. So we can say the situation is really dire and the crisis is um, ever persistent. Manny Mong, Myanmar researcher with Human Rights Watch, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.